An interesting circumstance. I was just back from the war, and uh, the manager of the radio station where I had returned to work said, there's a big basketball game this Friday night, and we ought to carry it. Do you want to do it? And I'd never done a sports event on the radio, but I said, well, I, <laughs> I said, I'm willing to give it a shot. So it turned out to be, it was Kansas against Oklahoma A&M in 1946 in the NCAA tournament in Kansas City. They had one of the first of the seven footers, Bob Curland, playing for them. And they beat Kansas, uh, but I did do the game, obviously. And uh, then the next Monday, I was back to school here at KU, and my mathematics professor said, we listened to the game the other night, and you made us feel just like we were there. It was really good. I said, well, that, that's good to hear. And so my career, unlike most guys who would start with Colby versus Atwood or something like that, in the high school ranks, I started out with an NCAA tournament game for my very first broadcast. Well, yes, that was, uh, that was in 1955, and the field house had been finished. Kansas State, of course, was the first of the two big schools to have a major arena. And they built Ahern Field House, and named for Mike Ahern, who was a longtime director of athletics and a big name in Kansas State athletics. And they opened theirs in 1950, and Fog Allen, of course, put pressure on the Kansas legislature to give Kansas an even bigger arena than Kansas State had. And so after a long construction period, it opened in March of 1955. Kansas had not won a conference home game that entire season, but they hosted Kansas State in the last home game of the conference season, and KU prevailed in that ball game, so they did, they did chalk up a league victory. My dad was the uh, business manager of athletics at KU way back when I was a kid, and so he worked very closely with, with Fog Allen, and we, we always called him Doc. The nickname Fog came from the way when he umpired softball or baseball, he would blare out the balls and strikes in a, in a foghorn-like voice, and so he acquired the nickname Fog then. But anyway, uh, so I knew, I knew Doc uh, very well as I was growing up, and uh, we were close then. I became a broadcaster working with him for, until he retired, so I had a very close relationship with him. Very nice man, very uh, very inspirational, and one of the great public speakers of all time. Wilt was uh, he was somewhat reserved in his acceptance of other people. I think he had kind of built a protective screen around himself because he was so tall, and uh, he didn't he didn't like the the jokes and the attention and the notoriety that went with his great size. I mean, people would come up to him and say, how's the weather up there, big boy? <laughs> and stuff like that. And he wasn't real fond of, of that type of conversation. But uh, people ask me, you know, who was the best, who's the best player that ever played basketball at KU? And, and my response to that is that, well, Wilt was the most dominant player that we've ever had because of his size and, and just the way he was just was the huge force on the floor. As far as the most skilled basketball player, I still vote for Danny Manning as the best we've ever had because Dan <coughs> Danny was a great uh, scorer, a great passer, a great shot blocker, made everybody on the team so much better themselves. So he was, he was the most skilled, but Wilt uh, had a dominance in the game that nobody's ever matched. Uh, it soon became obvious that uh, they were gonna put a screen around Wilt defensively, and the old so-called box and one <laughs> was used, only the difference was the box was around Wilt, and the one guy was, would be the other one who would chase somebody else who might have the ball.
but uh, they they kind of took the fun out of it for Wilt, and after two years he uh, bailed out and went to play with the Harlem Globetrotters instead of finishing his career as a Jayhawk. Well, it had a dirt floor when it opened up. The court was elevated and the players had to step up onto the court and then sometimes in their quest to dive for a loose ball, they would even slide off the edge of the court, not often, but it did happen occasionally. And uh, it was, it didn't have any of the grandeur that it has today. Uh, it was just a huge, they called them the attendance, then in the first game they called the attendance 17,228. Uh, but subsequently the uh, fire marshal made them reduce the number of available seats to the present 16,300. But for a while, they played at about a thousand more capacity than they now call capacity. But it was, it was dusty and kind of dirty, but uh, still was a grandiose place to move into after playing in Hulk Auditorium, which seated, which was a music hall and seated about 3,000 spectators. I still think maybe the the best game of all was the last game against Missouri in in recent times. Uh, there was just so much emotion involved in that game. We were 17 points behind at one stage and made the great comeback and T. Rob blocked the shot, you know, at the finish that preserved the victory for KU and it was a uh, so satisfying to make up that huge deficit and then beat the hated Tigers in the last visit ever to Lawrence, Kansas. And so that's a game that you certainly do remember. Uh, there are many others that I remember. Of course, Bud Stallworth scored 50 points in his last game against, uh, in his last game as a Jayhawk, and it was against Missouri also. So that was memorable. Uh, when Jacques Vaughn was a freshman, Indiana was coached by Bobby Knight and they came in here to play. They had a great guard by the name of Damon Bailey and uh, Jacques had only been played in four or five games maybe by that time. And he, <coughs> he hit a three-pointer at the end uh, to give Kansas the victory against a really good Indiana team. That was a very exciting matchup. Uh, there have been just a, a whole bunch of great games to, to remember through the years. The students have come to play a bigger role now than they did way back when. Uh, seats were not, uh, big sections were not set aside for the students in those days and consequently they didn't uh, cheer as a unit as much as they do now and they uh, of course are pretty much renowned as contributing to making this the greatest basketball arena in the United States. And people always ask you, why, why is it the best arena in the country to play? And I think it's because the way the students get involved in the game and the decibel output of the, of the crowd. And uh, in the early days, the alums and the season ticket holders had uh, seats in close proximity to the court more so than they do now uh, and it's more more student driven i think the the response now than it was then uh, the goal of finishing 60 years would be a good place to put it to bed and it turned out that, that was a terrible title for my book because two years after i quit we won the Orange Bowl and the National Basketball Championship in the same year, so I thought, what the hell, I should have stayed two more years, then it would have, really would have been a good place to stop. <laughs>